wrap it up. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Let's Make Art. We paint all the time, and I'm so glad you're here to paint with us because painting is just fun in general. This is what we're painting tonight. Everybody, ooh and ah at its beauty. Ooh. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm really excited. It's our first project out of our October box, so I think there are a couple new subscribers here. So welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, just to kind of give um, you guys a rundown on how things work here. We have four, uh, we do it, okay, let me, let me start over. I'm gonna give you a rundown. <laughs> we do a new watercolor project every single week. We release a shortened tutorial uh, on Wednesdays, usually. And then the next Tuesday, we do the live version of that tutorial. So there's tutorials for every project. Uh, if you subscribe, it comes with paint and paper and outlines and all of that stuff. Yeah, that's pretty much how it works, right? If they don't want to subscribe, they can buy the products. Yeah. If you don't have a subscription, you can still buy the individual kits or just like the full bottles of paint on our website at letsmakeart.com. Yes, nailed it, nailed it. Okay, so we are doing our apples to apples project. Uh, the colors that we are using tonight for this are emerald green, red, tangerine, dandelion yellow, and black. Now, if you have Dr. P.H. Martin sets, the equivalent to those are going to be scarlet, amber yellow, dandelion yellow, moss green, and black. So those colors, basically red, orange, yellow, green, and black is all you need for tonight. Now, um, oh, we're using two brushes, a round six and a round two. Um, you might have different sizes at my table here because um, we're sharing and they're just my personal brushes and I don't have a million of each size. You know what I'm saying. Okay. Um, uh, you guys ready? Yep. <laughs> okay, great. Now, before we do our warm ups here, everybody needs to raise their right hand and you have to repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have a good time. Oh, Brock, you didn't do it the whole time. I was watching the. <laughs> uh, anyways, I like to start with that little oath because sometimes when we like paint and we're not used to it, we get all like nervous and afraid, and we're you know afraid that our stuff is not going to look as like somebody else's. And here we celebrate differences, we accept where we all are on our watercolor journey, and we do this more for fun. Okay, so it's not a big deal. It's just painting. It's just water and paper and paint. That's all it is. Okay? Yep. Great. Now let's do some warm ups. So go ahead, grab your brush, any size that you want, and get that brush wet. And then uh, what I like to do is, oh, Susan noticed that I was wearing a red sweater for the apples. Susan, thank you for noticing that. I did that on purpose. Okay. Susan, Susan on it. Okay. So the first thing that we are going to do for our warm-ups is I want you to paint like a circle just with water. So only using water, paint, a, you can do any shape you want. You can do a circle or a heart, and then you're gonna fill that circle in. Okay, and once it's filled in, I want you to put your paintbrush in the red, and then you're gonna go along the outside of that wet, circle just along the edge and you're just going to put that paint in along the edge and then it's automatically going to kind of like bleed out and go a little bit crazy and we want that to happen yes 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 great <laughs> i did it your arm is in the way so i had to look great Beautiful, that's exactly what we want. Now, depending on how much water and paint you're using, they're all gonna show up differently on your paper, and that is okay. The amazing thing with watercolor is that it's gonna be different for everybody because how the water and the paint is interacting, it is gonna change per person, and it's really great. Okay, so that's essentially how we're gonna do one apple. Now, another thing that we I want you to do is I want you to do just pick up um, I mean, I guess it could be any color, but I'm just going to use red. 
So when I get my paintbrush wet, I then like to like hit it off the side of my cup so it's not like totally dripping and I'm not getting water splotches on my paper. And then I'm gonna pick up a bunch of red paint and I want you to make like uh, any shape, like a, let's just do like a rectangle. And then while it's still wet, I want you to pick up uh, orange or yellow and just kind of drop it in. Oh, yellow. Wait, and do I have to get my... <laughs> so, <laughs> I every time. So the thing with water uh, and watercolor... This is watercolor, I forgot. This is watercolor, so you want to make sure you use water. And even though these are liquid watercolors, which some of you might not have used before, I know it's really tempting just to use just the paint the whole time, but sometimes even though they're liquid, if you like just use paint, it's gonna come, see how that's kind of a rough texture? How it has that like rough, agree with me so you guys know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yes, okay, great. Uh, if you get it wet and then do it, it's a smooth line. Ooh. So if you're painting and you're starting to get this rough texture and you don't want that rough texture, then you just get your paintbrush. It just need, means you need more water on your brush. That's all it means. Okay. Yeah, so just kind of, I want you to just see how like you can drop in different colors within another color, how that can kind of enrich um, the shapes or whatever you're doing. Because when we do these apples, we drop in big globs of, I guess globs, not the right word, but big chunk that's not any better but we're putting in orange and yellow drops yes great okay and then what else can we practice what else can we do that we need to do for today okay um and then what we're going to do is that circle that we already painted i want you to just get your brush kind of wet and i want you to just kind of go along the edge and see if you can blend it out a little bit because with watercolor, um, you can move it after you've like painted with it, right? Like you can blend stuff out. It's gonna move kind of around. Now, the longer you let it sit there without blending, the harder it is to blend out. Prime example. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just like, here, I'll show you gentries. So the difference between Gentry's and mine was I had a lot more paint, so it wasn't totally dry, which is why when I went to go blend it out, it still blended. Yours was pretty much dry, so it didn't blend that much. That's totally fine. I just want you guys to know that like, even this one that's still wet, you can blend that. Okay. And kind of move that around. The circle is so round. Mine? It is. So good. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I'm the next Picasso. <laughs> All right, so. The next thing that we're gonna practice is the actual apple shape, okay? So, which was Tamara's idea, which was a great idea, Tamara, appreciate that. So, uh, let's just go ahead and get our brush wet, pick up a little bit of red. So it's just like a light color wash that we're gonna do. Now, when you do your apple shapes, they're almost gonna be heart-like in terms of there's gonna be two bumps at like the top. So you're gonna kinda do one bump and then it's gonna go towards like the middle, so it almost looks like half a heart. And then there's gonna be two little bumps at the bottom. And then you finish off that like heart shape like that. It kind of looks like a tooth also. Yeah. Many ways, many ways to describe this. Yes, excellent. Also apples, some apples can be a little bit more round. Right, because if you put a stem and a leaf on that, people are gonna be like, oh, that's an apple. So don't stress about your um, apple shapes too much because apples come in all different forms. One thing I do wanna take note of, note of that I noticed while I was painting is when, if I went to go do my apple shape and my bottom like little bumps were too on the wide side like this, it looked like a bell pepper. So. <laughs> And they're red, so that can be confusing. So just if you're running into that problem, then just take these bottom shapes and you're gonna wanna put those closer together in the middle. Uh, yeah, yes, excellent, excellent. Do that a couple times, you guys. We're, we're painting a lot of apples, so kind of play with those shapes. Oh, toast, it does also look like toast. 
<laughs> so just kind of play around. But in this project, we are going to outline it with water and then we drop in color so it's not as stressful because you can make adjustments if like the first time you lay it down and the shape isn't there then it's just water so you can play with it. Are you judging my apples? No, Gentry, we took an oath not to judge. <laughs> That's a very important part of it. Are you, Are you judging I'm your apples? apples? <laughs> no, I'm not scared of that. Because it's not about who's better. Okay? Yes. Because, <laughs> what? I have a question. Yes, Brock? Um, so I painted today. Yes. And, uh, I didn't know how to hold my brush. Is, what's the best way to hold the brush in your hand? Okay, Brock, great question. He asked how, the best way to hold a brush. Uh, how, how you hold your brush is personal to you. There are artists who hold it different ways. I hide it. I, I hold it the same way I hold a writing utensil. So however I write, hold a pencil or a pen, that's the same way. Um, and then if you want like a looser like brush strokes, then you're going to hold it more at the top. And if you like for me, if I'm doing really nice detail and I'm going to be really fine, I hold it more towards the bottom. But however you hold your paint brushes up to you. Can I'm, I paint with my feet? Can you paint with your feet? Right now. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say no. But if you want to do that in your free time, and let me know how that goes. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. And one last thing we're going to do. And this is just a warm-up sheet, so if you're running out of room, don't stress. You can just, I'm just going to color over stuff. We're going to do a value change from light to dark. So with watercolor, what you have to keep in mind is um, if we want a lighter of the same color, we don't have white paint. We use water to lighten it up. And what that does is it makes the paint more transparent, which means the white of the paper shows through more. So the white of the paper is almost actually acting like white paint in watercolor. So. So to do a value change from dark to light, I'm going to get my brush wet, kind of hit it off the side, and then I'm going to pick up a bunch of red or any color at all. Just load your paintbrush up with a bunch of paint. And then you're going to make like a rectangle shape, like just dash, dash, dash. And then rinse your brush off completely. And then right where you left off, you're going to take that water and just kind of smear that up and down and then move to the right. Or if you're left-handed, you can go to the left if that's, if that's easier for you. And then you just want that color to just kind of like blend out. So you're just gonna kind of, if it doesn't automatically move, then you just kind of work it up and down across a little bit. Now you don't want to go all the way to the left when you're working it um, because this is our darkest area and we want to leave that alone. And so if we just kind of work it back in the middle, then I'm going to get a dark value, a medium value, and a very light value. Yes. Uh-huh. And even if you have to add water and do one more like swoop from the end to get that very lightest color, you basically want your lightest to be like barely there kind of color. So um, don't be afraid to just like keep adding. Yes, excellent. Very nice. Very nice. Yep, great. And this technique is probably the one I use the very most in watercolor. I always like lay a bunch of color down and then just use water and a clean brush to spread that color around. And then I just automatically will get value changes on things, which is awesome. I'm trying to think. Do you guys want to practice a leaf really quick? Yeah. Okay. So for the leaves, so there's two ways that you can paint leaves. You can um, like just kind of outline it. So to outline it, I do um, like an eyeball shape, like basically like an eyeball. And then just fill it in. Now I like my leaves to be narrow, like a point on the top and the bottom. Um, so I just make sure that my leaves are narrow and then in the middle they're nice and wide. So they have that kind of this shape going on. You guys see that? Yep, yep, great, great, excellent. Now another way that you can do leaves 
And this is where round brushes come in really handy because that's what we're using tonight are rounds. So they have a thick belly and a thin top and that just means you can do thin and thick brush strokes in the same line um, just by your pressure. So um, I don't do this all the time but sometimes what you can do for your leaves is you can just do it in one brush stroke which is you start off really light and then you push down on your brush hard and then you go really soft again. And that's how you can do like a brush stroke in just kind of one leaf. I mean in one, a leaf in one brush stroke is what I'm trying to say. So you just kind of brush. Yeah, and then when you're pushing down on it, you can kind of like move it to the side a little bit and that's how you're gonna get an even thicker line. But this is a little bit harder to do, so don't stress if you can't do this. Um, it takes a lot of practice and even I, don't do that most of the time. Usually I just kind of outline it and then fill it in. <laughs> okay, I think we're ready to go. Did you go over the steps yet? Oh, Brock, great. So we have four steps for this apples project. Step one, we're gonna paint apples. Step two, we're gonna paint more apples. I know that doesn't sound very helpful, but when we're going, it will be fine. Step three, we're gonna do our leaves. And then step four, we do kind of our blending and our finishing de detail work. Now, usually I would like break it up to where we would do like our full apples first and then our sliced apples. But I think it would be good if we do those at the same time because then we can kind of like put them right next to each other instead of having to like imagine leaving spaces. So I'm actually just gonna start on the left side of the painting and then work my way across. So we're gonna be doing those apples simultaneously. So for this project, step one and two are the same. Um, we're gonna do those at the same time. Okay, yep. great. Let's get started. So uh, grab a clean sheet of paper and you can keep your scrap paper handy if you wanna like test colors or test brush strokes before you get started. And um, what we're gonna start with for our very first one is this apple right here. So this full looking apple right there. So. You guys ready? Okay, yes. you might be scared. Don't be scared. It's just, it's just paint on paper. If you don't like it, throw it away and do another one. I do that all the time. It's not a big deal. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my brush nice and wet and then I'm going to draw my apple. Now I'm working on the left-hand side. It's gonna be kind of up on the left-hand side and then I'm just gonna make my apple shape just using water and then I'm gonna fill it in. If you're left-handed, I would start on the right-hand side and work your way across. Great question. Now my water is slightly colored from our warm-ups. That's fine with me. I'm not gonna stress about that. Okay, now that I have my apple nice and wet. I'm gonna take some wet red paint and then I'm gonna start on the bottom part and drop in that color right on the bottom. And it's just gonna start spreading across that water. And I'm gonna help it move, but on this left-hand side, I'm actually um, gonna kinda of like leave this side alone a little bit. So I'm gonna spread this red color around So I basically am filling up pretty much all of the apple except for kind of that up left hand corner. And some people are asking if they can watch this after we're done. Absolutely, we post our lives after, so if you can't tune in live with us, you can watch this later, and it's up there forever on our website and on our YouTube channel, so don't stress out. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna kind of rinse my brush and then um, just kind of use that red that's already there and start filling in the left-hand side. But it's, I want it to be a really light, it's almost like a pink that we're putting in there. So just like a light, which is why I rinsed my brush to get that light color. And then this is where we drop in our orange, so just while it's still wet on that left-hand side, I'm dropping in some orange. 
kind of blending that in with my red. And then I'm gonna drop in just some pure yellow right in the middle of that orange, so like right there. Now the reason why we're doing this is because um, apples are three-dimensional, so there's going to be a light source, and wherever that light source hits, it's going to be a lighter value or a highlight. Now instead of leaving that area white where that light source will be, we're actually putting in a different color. And what I think that does is I think it just kind of adds a little bit of depth and dimension to your apple. And I would fill in more red around there too. Yep. Sarah, we've got a question about the paint. She says her paint is a little gloopy. Is there a way she can... Oh, I have heard that some people, when their paint gets gloopy, is um, they kind of like shake it up or they use something to kind of mix it up to kind of break it down a little bit. But if you're having a lot of problem with it, message us and we can send them. We can send you another bottle because it shouldn't be so gloopy that you can't use it. <laughs> Brock, you look so confused at that. You're like... <laughs> okay and then another thing that we're going to do is whenever a form has a highlight it also has a shadow so I'm going to grab a little bit of black like a tiny tiny bit of black and um, basically I'm just gonna make like a brown and to make browns you just mix a bunch of colors together so you can make brown by mixing orange and black you can make brown by mixing green and red um, but essentially we just want kind of a, a reddish brown and um, on the right hand side bottom right hand side I'm gonna put in that dark color just on the bottom and then what that is going to do is because the apple is round, the bottom part is turning away from the light and so it is shadowed. So the top part, which is that left hand side, is highlighted from the light source and the bottom part is shadowed because it's going away from that. Which did you say that one? So to, you can mix brown by doing black and orange or red and green. Basically, a few different colors mixed together makes brown. Okay. And you can also mix complementary colors. That's rock. Yes, brown. you mix complementary colors to make brown, and the complementary pairs are red and green, orange and blue, and purple and yellow. You learn that in art school. You do learn that in art school, or by watching this show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You guys, we did our first apple. Good job. It's going great. How are you all feeling so far? <laughs> you guys should be feeling good. Now I know it might seem scary, but trust me, the more you add stuff on there, the more it's going to be fine. If there's anything I've learned, just put more stuff on there. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to move to our um, sliced apple, this bottom one down here. So we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're only going to outline it in water. We're not going to fill it in with water. So I'm taking my paintbrush. Yes. I just went into that orange. <laughs> no problem. There's some yellow. You might have to press down. They're childproof, so you have to push them down. Okay. You got it? I have enough kids that I should be able to <laughs> You got it? Yes, you got it. Okay. So, now I'm taking my paintbrush. It's just uh, water that I'm using. And I'm making my apple shape. Now, remember to kind of do that heart the bottom part, put it close together. So I do my outline. I'm not filling it in. It's just water that I'm using. And then I'm going to fill up my paintbrush with red and just go along the very edge and just let that red kind of ble bleed out across that water. Now it's gonna be heavier in some places. It's going to kind of bleed differently on everybody's. That is okay. We want them to all be a little bit different. And you can see there are chunks that are thicker on mine. That's fine. 
If yours comes across totally even, that's fine too. Don't stress about it. It's just gonna, it's gonna do its own thing. This is the part of watercolor where you kind of just have to let it go. Yes, great, 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 great. <laughs> okay, and then you're gonna leave it. <laughs> and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our seeds in there. So um, later in the, in the last step, we're gonna kind of blend this out and blend out the seeds, but we're not gonna do that yet because it's too wet. So I want you to switch to your smaller brush I want you to make some brown. So if you haven't made brown yet, grab some red, grab some green, grab a little bit of black, and you're gonna get this nice dark brown color. And using that, you're just gonna do your seeds. Now your seeds are basically just like water droplets. So they're narrow at the top and then round at the bottom, and you're gonna do two in the middle, just two little seeds. And we are going to blend these out, so if the shapes are a little wonky, who cares? Because we're going to like kind of smear them up at the end anyway, so it's not a big deal. Yes. Great job. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Yes. My first apple looks like a perfect peach. You know what? It does a little bit, but... Listen, that's if your okay. painting is apples and peaches, then that's great. If your painting turns out to be apples and peaches, that's still a great painting. That's a pretty good painting. It is. <laughs> it's refrigerator worthy. And um, that's it for the sliced. So I know it looks a little empty right now, but we're going to go back to it. So uh, don't worry about it and let's move on. Okay, we're going to do another sliced apple. Now this one, and when you do your apples, try and do them a little bit closer together. So because we're going to end up filling in this space with leaves. So if there's big spaces, that's okay, but we don't want them like so far apart. Okay, so I'm going to do this next apple like right here and sometimes like even taking your finger and putting like being like okay this is where it's gonna go it helps your brain kind of visualize where that is because it's just that like actual visual of where it's gonna be <laughs> it's fine you guys it's fine okay <laughs> okay so it's it's another slice one so we're just taking water that's all we're using right now now uh when you draw the outline of this apple let your line be thick the thicker it is, the more that red can kind of bleed out. So I'm going to just uh, make my apple shape. This one is going to be a little wonky on purpose because I'm, you know. It's trying to make me feel better. Because <laughs> I like to live on the edge and make weird shapes. It's great. I said it. I said it, you guys. <laughs> okay. So... And I'm doing another kind of, I'm thickening up my little apple line. Now I'm taking red, just picking up a bunch of red and going on the edge. <laughs> Living on the edge and painting on the edge. You guys know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just let that bleed out. It's going to bleed out differently and weird. It's sounding more and more violent. It is. It, it is what I do. It's a war on this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, now I have a wonky shaped apple. I'm not mad about it. It's fine. Okay. Great. That's it. That's all it is. Grab your smaller brush and let's make some seeds. Cute little teardrop seeds right in the middle. Just a little doot. Doot. And a little another doot. Doot and doot. Right there. <laughs> what, Brian? Everything you're doing is great. Oh, thanks. I really do love Gentry's color though on that. That's really nice. On her, on this one? On her peach. Yeah, it is really nice. I'm going to turn down my brightness, so. Okay. <laughs> yes. Living on the edge. Someone says, their son says, be like Elsa, let it go. That is right. I've never seen Tangled. That's, fro <laughs> That's frozen, Brock. You have a daughter. 
He has to have seen Frozen. Don't let him <laughs> Okay. That's it for that apple. We're moving on to another apple. It's another sliced apple. Many sliced apples going on. It's great, it's fine. You can do whatever you want on your painting. Maybe you're like, it's time for a full apple for me. Well then do it, it's, it's your painting, it's your life. Do whatever you want. Um, but I'm gonna do another sliced one because that's what I have on my guide. Okay, great. Do whatever so. you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just take your water, it's that same thing. now. Um, it's okay if your apples are kind of slightly different sizes, right? If you're looking at my example here, this one's a little smallish and that one's kind of big. Mix it up, okay? All apples come in different colors and sizes, so it's not a big deal. My water does look like apple cider. That's what Laura Jones said. It does. No, I've done that so many times. It does not <laughs> taste good. Okay. You have done it? Accidentally drank my paint water? Yes. Oh. If you have a regular beverage next to your paint water, you will either put your paintbrush in your beverage cup or you will drink your paint water. It happens every single time. Use lids. That's what I've learned with your beverage water. Okay. Next thing, just another sliced apple. So go ahead, take your water, make your apple shape. So one time my husband put we have hydro flasks. You guys know what? Mm -hmm. um, they keep, they just keep your beverage really cold or whatever temperature you want. Anyways, uh, we were going somewhere and we had cookies and he put milk in there and I didn't know. And I was expecting water. Oh, no. And have you ever drank something expecting one thing and it was another and you can't even figure out what it was you drank? I like took a drink and I'm like, I don't know what this is, but this is not water. This is wrong. He's like, it's milk. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> That's okay then, but it stressed me out. Okay, I have my apple shape. I just need a little more red. Now you're gonna f do your apple edging, your red, your red blood bleed, your, you. Your red <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm like, blood how do I make blood. this not sound bad? Uh, there's not a way I can do that, okay. Now, another thing that we can do here while this is still wet is we can take a little bit of that orange and introduce that to the kind of bleeding colors and maybe a little yellow. You're like, this is our third apple slice and you're just saying this now. Well, I honestly forgot till right now. But it's okay because we're gonna blend out the other twos and you can add different colors to that if you want. But I can, I'm just gonna take a little bit of yellow and orange and kind of just like drop it in. Yep. And it's just gonna kinda just live there. And you can change the shape of your apple after you put like, I'm like, you know what? I kinda want this apple to be a little bit more round. So I'm going to just round it out. You can change the apple, the shape of your apple later, okay? Don't stress about it. I'm changing mine, it needed to be more round. And that needs to be more round. Great, 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 great. So let's do a full apple again. Now um, on my example, I have a nice big full apple down here at the bottom, but I didn't leave a ton of room. And this is why it's good to kind of like make changes as you go and not follow along with me exactly because uh, you have to do what's working on your paper, right? So for me, I'm probably just gonna do a small full apple right here and that's what I'm gonna do. Now, I don't even, I probably wouldn't put an apple there and that's fine. Like we'll just fill that with leaves so don't stress about it. But just look at your painting and see where an apple fits basically is, is what it's, it's going to do. So I'm just going to this is gonna be like a tiny baby apple, but that's okay. But different, yeah, Brock. Um, I know when we were filming the tutorial, you mentioned not having all your apples go in the same direction. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. So if you look at the example, we have apples going different ways. So um, all these kind of apples are kind of turning towards the left. You see that, you see how they're slightly turned. And then as I get, as I'm going across, which this tiny one, I'm gonna have it actually turn to the right a little bit. 
and then when I get back over here, they're gonna go back left. I just like having my apples turn different ways because you'll see as you paint that the direction you turn your apples, that is the motion the viewer eyes are gonna go. So if all of your apples are totally up and down straight, that's fine. It's just gonna make your viewer eyes just move up. If you want the viewer's eyes to stay within the painting, then you're gonna turn the apples towards each other. And then that way they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna like just follow that line that you're making. So thank you for bringing that up, Brock. So just kind of be aware of that as you're painting the direction you're painting them, just switch it up. Okay, so I'm gonna do my tiny little apple shape down here. This one might look like a crab apple because it's kind of small. That's okay. And this one I'm gonna fill in since it's a full apple. So fill that in with water. And when it's all full, you're gonna take that red paint and you're gonna go along and start putting red in. Remember to kind of avoid that upper left-hand corner with this red paint. Fill in everywhere else. Can, is this uh, too far down or can they see that from above? Uh, they can see it. Okay. Okay, so I filled in my apple, except that left-hand side. Now I'm gonna kind of rinse my brush and just kind of use the paint that's already there to spread out that red, and it's a lighter color red, which is exactly what I want. Now, if it was a nice full red, like what's going on right here, then if I try and put in other colors on top, you're not gonna see those colors as well, which is why when you're layering colors like this, and you're doing naturally darker colors like red, you wanna lighten it up wherever you're gonna drop in that other color. So I'm gonna drop in some orange. And then I'm gonna drop in some yellow. And remember like you guys can make these um, apples like maybe on your first apple you didn't like that brown shadow you put in it just wasn't working for you you liked how it was plain red before then leave it red that's totally your choice I like to put in a little bit of shadow on mine to like finish off that form but I know that that might be a weird concept so if you don't like how that happened on your painting then don't do it on your other apples it's not a big deal How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Focus, because we're quiet. Very nice. Everyone just wants you to know that the brown in your palette looks like a frog. <gasps> it does. Oh my it God. does. Now we can't mm, use what it. an excellent. You're right. We can't use it. That one kind of looks like a whale. Yeah, I see that. I see that. It's pretty meta. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make another brown then, because I like that frog. <laughs> <laughs> There. Okay, I'm gonna put in a little shadow on the right hand, right bottom side of my apple. He looks dead. He does, he does look dead. <laughs> dead. Roadkill frog. Road frog for sure. Surprise, that's what this video is all about. <laughs> Surprise, this video is about dry, dead frogs. Yeah. It's great. It's about death. You thought you were gonna to learn to paint? Nope. Too bad. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> this is the wrong show. <laughs> this is the wrong show. No, it's the right show, Gentry. That's what we're telling them. It's right. This is where you, you're here to paint. Yep. Nice. <laughs> nice. Great. Thank you. <laughs> They're great. Okay, let's check in. We do, we do this every once in a while. I oh. put yours to the center and I just like look at it. Okay. These are looking really nice. I love the different shapes. I love that they're starting to move directions. That looks great. We have great like textures going on here where this water kind of bled out. For here a little bit, what you can do is when you put in your brown, you can kind of like uh, add a little bit more red to make that brown blend in a little bit more seamlessly. Okay. And then I'm gonna fill in over here just a little bit more to 
because you can like our paper is starting to bend a little bit since yours isn't attached to anything so when it does starts to like oh, I just splattered all over yeah. your paper Gentry you I'm need. so sorry it. it's cute. okay I'm so happy you feel that way <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> So because your paper is starting to bend, it's making the water want to puddle on that side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift up some of that water just using like a dry brush. Okay. So if you notice that you're getting puddles on your paper and you don't like that, just take your brush, dry it off on your paper towel, and you're literally just going to lift up that water, dry it off, lift, dry it off, lift. Then I'm going to put a little bit more red back in there. And then that way it's not just going to sit on there because then it can like move and, and drip and make your paper bend a little bit more. But everything's looking great. I'm really sorry about those orange splatters. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, great. All right, let's look at, I didn't even introduce everybody. Angel, this is Angel, this is Lori, this is Gentry. I'm Laura. Sarah Cray, Laura, <laughs> Laura, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Lori. Oh, I'm so far <laughs> Lori. I'm Welcome, Lori. <laughs> Laura. So this is Laura's. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we got some great colors. We have a little bit of puddling here, but what I'm going to do is because this is, we don't have like a deep saturated red on this side where that brown is. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to add a little bit of red over there because then that brown won't stick out as much, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to be more of a natural transition. And then I'm just going to kind of blend this up to where that yellow and orange is. And a lot of times blending is just taking like a damp brush and then just like moving the paint back and forth across two lines. So we're kind of like mixing these, these spaces together. And then I'm gonna move, you can move the paint when it's like puddled like this. I'm gonna move it down towards the bottom a little bit more where that shadow would be. Because it would be more towards the bottom. Yeah, it's just kind of like. Yeah, it kind of just like moved up there. And that's fine. Sometimes it's just gonna travel. Yeah. yeah, exactly, travel on its own. Sometimes you can just let that go and see what happens. But if it's bothering you, you can just literally take your paintbrush and just kind of like hurt it down like a sheep herder. <laughs> okay, but besides that, it's looking good. I love the colors that are happening here. Um, this one you might want to move down a little bit, that brown side. And then I would do another layer of red over here too. But besides that, it's looking really good. Okay, Angel, let me see yours here. Okay, the, app, the shape of your apples is awesome. I think they're looking really good. I just think you just need a little bit more like actual red saturation. So if you're painting and you're getting really light, soft colors like this, you can go ahead and just do another layer on top. So I'm gonna pick up mostly paint, like just red paint, and I'm just gonna start filling this in. And you see how much darker that is? And that's because I have more paint than water on my brush. So if you're painting and it's just coming off too light, you just need more paint on your brush. So I'm just gonna start to fill that in. Like that. Then I'm gonna grab some yellow and kind of like blend in this color a little bit more. Cause we want the, like the thickness of it to match. So we're gonna put that in. And I think this shadow is really nice. I'm gonna add another little drop down here. Kind of fill out that apple. So maybe even on this one or on these, you can go, I would like, if your sliced apple is still pretty light, you can just do it again, just another layer on top. Just take some water, lay down the water, and then just taking that red, I'm just going to drop it in. And it's still, because I re-wet it, it's going to spread out. And now we're getting that nice, rich red color going on. Just like that. Okay, so maybe do that again with that one. Do another layer of water to get it wet and then drop in that nice, a lot of that red and then it's gonna get that nice dark red on there. But it's looking really great. Okay. And for yours, since your apples are running a little bit small, you might do a few more apples than us just to fill up your paper more. 
and there's nothing wrong with that. Just do what you gotta do. Okay, so I'm gonna do another apple top right hand corner filling in this big chunk over here. This one is gonna be another full one. So I'm gonna take my water and I'm gonna make my space. Now this one is gonna be kind of turned towards the left a little bit. And if it's easier for you to like turn your paper to while you're painting it, like do whatever you gotta do, whatever's easier for you. So I'm gonna just kind of like do my apple shape. We okay? Yeah, fine. Okay. Fine. <laughs> You're just pressing buttons over there. I'm just charging the iPad. Oh, okay. So I'm making my apple shape. And I'm filling it in with water. You guys, I feel really embarrassed I didn't in in introduce you and that I said your name wrong. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have my apple and now I'm going to drop in my red. Now when you drop in your red, make sure there's lots of paint on your brush. If you gotta get a little more, there's nothing wrong. We're gonna run out, of, we're sharing our palette, so we'll probably have to fill ours a little bit more than if you're just doing it at home. Filling it. Michael Cray just joined. Michael Cray, you sound I'm not gonna, that's my husband. <laughs> I'm not gonna finish that sentence, but great to see you, my love. Okay, so I put in my red <laughs> and then I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm just going to- You turned red. I, did I turn red? She's embarrassed. <laughs> I was like, gonna hit on him and I'm like, that's not appropriate. <laughs> I'm gonna stop right there. Okay. Welcome to the show, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> So I have my light red in my corner and that's where I'm gonna drop in my yellow. <laughs> Hold on, is his name Michael? Yeah. Did nobody Did you call him Jonah? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who Jonah Hill is, the actor? Yes. Does your husband not look exactly like <laughs> him? Okay. I did not mean to call him Jonah though. No, it's okay. That just happens. My husband <laughs> My husband does look like Jonah Hill, but like the most attractive version of Jonah Hill that hey, can he's be. Not attract, I mean, not not attractive. <laughs> but let me tell you, it like it it like cuts Michael to the core when people tell him he looks like Jonah Hill because he's like, what? When I saw him, I actually stalked you today on your live videos because I've never watched you before. Uh huh. So I got on and I saw him and I'm like, oh my gosh, she is a famous person. <laughs> her. Let her know this is her husband. <laughs> Oh, honey, That's I love you. It, you it's know what? Thing. Nothing wrong. You could probably get free food places. You probably could get free. <laughs> Just pretend you're Jonah yes. Hill. Hey, I'm Jonah. Hey, my name they is Jonah. They would probably let him in. They probably would. Free drinks. <laughs> I love that you called him Jonah. <laughs> I know, and it didn't even, like, register for me until you, I was thinking about my like, well, when you said, welcome to the show, Jonah, I'm like, maybe she has a friend named Jonah watching. I don't know. <laughs> no, I completely forgot. Your husband's name was not Jonah. Uh, okay, I got my apple. I'm going to put in my little shadow. Here, my brown shadow just at the bottom. Brock. Is there a reason you didn't see your middle slice? Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot. It's missing its little dudes. It is missing its little seeds. <laughs> little, we need to put my little, oh, I'm messing up the frog. It's okay. I'm going to put in my little seed dudes. A dude here. A dude there, a dude here. Thanks, Brock. Yeah. I knew you had a purpose for being here. I'm glad you're here to remind me to put in seeds. Okay, I'm on my last apple. We're almost done with step one and two. Now, step three and four are gonna go so fast, it's gonna blow your mind, but this is the long part. Okay, this, my last one is gonna be sliced, but whatever you do on yours, that's up to you. I just like kind of having them um, like almost every other, but there's only two, so you know what I'm saying. But anyways, do what feels right for you on your painting. <laughs> this one's going to be a sliced one. So, I'm just going to outline it. I'm going to have it turned 
towards the left, kind of facing in. And I'm gonna make sure my outer rim is nice and wet and thick. Do my little heart shape. Now, if you guys are, if this is your first time painting with us, these projects that we do kind of freehand are a little on the more difficult side, so don't stress if it's hard for you. Um, it's, and like half the projects we do in the, in, the, in the month have outlines and the other half don't. And that's because sometimes it's fun just to kind of play. And then also it's kind of good to learn like composition. And the only way you learn that is just through practice. So that's why some of these don't have outlines because I want you to do it yourself. And then just to keep doing it and learn. And that's how you figure out how to fill in spaces and make um, something feel balanced and all of that stuff. Oh, I really liked how those, those kind of bled out. I'm gonna drop in some other colors in there. Here is the red. Okay. That lid again, let's see it. <laughs> she got it. She nailed it first try. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna put in my little brown seeds. Oh yeah, if you have, if you want to do like little slices of apples where they're like a half circle, put them in there. It's your painting. Tanya says your apples. Tanya's son or daughter, her uh -huh. eight-year-old says your apple looks like a bum. <laughs> <laughs> a nice round bum. Yes, it does. <laughs> That's great. It absolutely does. Okay, so I finished with my apples. I feel, I mean, I do have some white space over here on the left-hand side, but that's not enough space to put in apples. And so what do we do? We put leaves there and we fill in that space. So um, when you put in your leaves, actually let's do our stems first. So on all of the apples, I just put little steam stems. Now, the thing to remember with your stems is try and make them thin, and then they're gonna be thinner on the bottom where they meet the apple and a little bit thicker on the top. So I just kinda like to draw them. So I just kinda like, and I'm gonna turn my paper so it's not like my hands going in what I just painted. So I'm just gonna. You just used like five different colors for that stem. What did you do there? No, I just did red and green. Complementary colors and a little bit of black. Mm -hmm. It's what I did. <laughs> Brock, believe me. I'm not trying to trick you. Okay. So, and then if you're trying to mix your brown and you're like, this is too green, add more red. That's it. Or if it's too red, add more green. Um, kind of play with those colors. It's helpful me saying that, trust me. Okay. I'm going to put in the stem. I'm just gonna do a little line and then the top part, I'm just gonna kind of thicken up. So it's just a little, little thick. And you can make your stems as long as you want, whatever, it's your painting. But I'm gonna do mine, I don't know, what is that? Half an inch maybe? Brock, yeah. say yes, agree yeah. with me. <laughs> <laughs> And then on this apple, I'm gonna have my stem going out to the left um, because if I had it going out towards the right, it's gonna run into my other apple. So kind of kind of work around the apples that are that are there. Just play with it. There's one. Oh, that stem got thick real quick. That's okay. Yes, they look great. They're looking good. They're just apple stems. Apple stems are just yeah, kind of weird just in apple general. Stems. That's all they are. They're not even a big deal. And then I'm going to do another little stem. 
our soccer friend Courtney Van Brunt joined. Courtney! Oh, I told her that I was on the show tonight. You're welcome. More views. <laughs> More. Thanks, Gentry. <laughs> okay. Courtney, we miss you. We miss playing soccer with you. Okay. Now I'm gonna add my leaves. Now some of my stems I put leaves on and some of them I didn't. There wasn't any rhyme or reason to it. It was more random. So you're just gonna start kind of filling in leaves wherever there's spaces. So like for me, I'm gonna grab some green. Now with the greens, you don't have to use just plain green. You can add other colors to it to give it more depth like we did with the apples. You can add yellow to it. You can add brown to it. You can add black to it. You can add different colors for different colored leaves. Okay, so I'm going to do a leaf kind of coming in this way. I'm just gonna kind of draw it. Just gonna start putting, filling it in. Now some of them I leave like a little white line in between to almost act like a leaf vein, but you don't have to do that if you don't like that. I'm gonna put another one over here. But basically the goal with these leaves is we're trying to fill in the white spaces in between our apples to make our composition feel more together and feel more full. Now there was someone who posted, I can't remember who it was, um, but they did like a leaf with stems, like a stem with three leaves coming off and that was beautiful and it, great, it was great because it filled in big chunks of space. So if you have spaces that are too big for just one leaf, then maybe do a little trio of, of leaves in there. And then I'm gonna do a leaf kind of coming in here. Now another fun way that watercolor is awesome is we can do the same technique that we did with the apples where we draw the leaves with water or like a really light wash green. And then we drop in color. So while it's still wet, sorry, I need more green. While it's still wet, you grab some green and you just kind of drop it in there and it's just gonna kind of like move and do its own thing. And this is where you're gonna get super interesting textures that are more accidental because it's just the water and the color working together. So just kind of play with that. I'm gonna do another leaf in this corner. Add a little brown to it. over here and I'm kind of switching up the shape of my leaves but the generally they're all going to be pointed at the end with a thick middle belly And then here I want to put a leaf in here but I'm kind of like tight on space so I'm just gonna do a little guy just like a little leaf off my stem just a baby oh, that is cute. it's a cute little guy <laughs> a, little sassy. <laughs> a sassy little leaf sassy. sassy do a leaf over here Everybody gets a leaf. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're on step three, by the way. So you guys are doing great. We're almost done with this painting. Another fun thing with watercolor that we can do, we didn't do this in the warm-ups, but I love doing this, especially with leaves because we basically just have like thick parts, is after you lay down your color, you're gonna take just water and put just water drops in there. Now when you do that, wherever you put the water drops, that water is gonna make the color or the, the pigment like move to the outside of the water drops. So you're gonna get almost like these uh, like tie-dye textures a little bit, which are pretty cool. And one of the really wonderful things about watercolor. So kind of play with that, put water. It has to be wet though. If your leaf is totally dry and you wanna put a water drop in there, it's just gonna be a water drop on it. So just do it while it's still wet. Yes, Brock. Uh if you want those textures, can you rehydrate your leaf? Yes. So if you want, if you already did your leaf and you want it there but it's dry, just put, uh, just do water over it and, and do another wa color wash, like do it green again and then do the water 
droplets on there. So you can rehydrate it. Okay, and I'm gonna do another leaf. Kind of coming out this way. I'm gonna do some water textures in there. And then you can do both. I put, I put some little droplets of water and then I'm gonna do some droplets of color too, of just paint. So I'm gonna have kind of both going on in that leaf. Okay, then I just need one more, one more little guy on my top right. I'm doing over here. Just like that. Okay, so I put in my leaves and then this is where you kind of just like step back for a second, look and be like, where do I have any big white gaps that need to be addressed? Or is there anything that looks empty? And if there is, just put a leaf there. Very nice. How are you guys doing with leaves? They're being leaves. <laughs> They're being leaves. <laughs> They're leaves. They're looking great. Thanks. Are we going to check in now or after? Or are we just going to do the grand reveal at the end? Let's just do the grand reveal at the end. How do you guys feel about that? Fine. Grand reveal at the end. It's pretty exciting to do or the grand reveal. Uh, both. I'm a guest. You're both here. I'm talking to both of you. You are a guest. Okay. So, I'm good with my leaves. If you're still working on your leaves, that's fine. I'm just gonna go to step four and then you can come back and fill your leaves in because all we're doing for our very last step is we're just kind of blending out our apple slices. Now, we're just gonna take water and use a damp brush and kind of soften those seeds because if you look at the inside of an apple, if you cut one open, they kind of have like a tannish color and then as it gets closer to the center, they almost have like a green or they, they kind of get a little bit darker where the seeds are in the center. And so that's what we're gonna try and duplicate here. So now we don't wanna do that right after we put the seeds in because they're wet. And if we try and add water and blend those out, then all of that color is just gonna kind of go everywhere. So we wanna give it a second to dry and then we go in and blend. So I'm gonna start on the left-hand side and I'm actually gonna grab a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of green on my brush. So it's like the tiny, softest green wash because I feel like apples do tend to have that like green hint in the center. And then I'm just going to, with my wet brush, kind of blend out the brown here. And then I'm gonna rinse my brush and like kind of almost keep going to the red. So I'm gonna grab some red a little bit. As I keep on blending, it's gonna hit that red. And basically, we're just trying to soften those lines where there's harsh differences. We're kinda of gonna just blend those out. And if you wanna, if you're just like, I just really want more red on here, well, add another drop of red. Or this is where you can maybe add a little bit of a hint of yellow or orange somewhere. But we're, yeah, we're just trying to soften some stuff up, letting it get messy. Now, if you're, if we want it to be the most like dark in our blending near the seeds, so you're just gonna work those seeds a lot in the middle and really let those kind of bleed out and get a little bit messy. And then as they go out, then it's gonna get lighter like that. So you just gotta keep working your seeds. Yeah. It's too dark on in. Here, let me show you. Isn't it supposed to be clear? Okay. The apple's just been left out in the sun. Okay, so this is her. So I'm just gonna lift up some of this color. So just using a brush, a 
damp brush. I'm going to clean up some of this color here. And then what you can do is I'm going to make your seeds a little bit darker. And then because it's already wet, they're going to bleed out a little bit and that's okay. That's fine. And that's what we want. And then when it dries for a second, just take a damp brush and just go across the seeds like okay. really, really light. So when you do, so even on this ones, you might want to do another layer because if your seeds are too light, then they're not going to like blend out as much. So maybe do another, because you see how dark these are? Mm -hmm. That's what we want for our seeds. So maybe do another layer on those two and then work on blending that one. Okay. And then when those uh, dry out, you can blend those dark ones a little bit more. Now when I'm blending out, I am leaving like just a little hint of, of white spaces here and there. There's no like rhyme or reason to it. It's more just because apples are wet on the inside. So if there is a light source hitting that, then there are gonna be little glares. So I'm, this one I didn't do a very good job of that, but this next one, I'm just gonna leave see how there's just kind of white spaces where it didn't blend it out with water. So leave that on a couple of your slices because we, we want just that extreme uh, contrast of white and dark. And that's why we want these white spaces there. Now, if you're having problem blending your seeds out, another thing that you can do is to get a similar effect is you can just go over it lightly with water and then drop the brown in seeds on top and they're gonna bleed out a little bit and get a little fuzzy and get kind of that cool texture that we're going for. So that's what I did on mine here and then I'm just kind of moving that color around just a little bit. Yeah, so this one here, this one's not blending out as well. I'm moving it. It's kind of blending out, but not the same way I want it to. So I'm just going to grab some brown on my brush, put it on the seeds, and then just kind of take that color and just kind of blend it a little bit in that water. And then it, they're going to get that kind of fuzzy look that we're going for. And also sometimes when we blend out, then like this happened on this one where now the seeds aren't as sharp. So what I like to do is after it dries, I'll just do another layer seed on top and make those nice dark brown. Like that. I'm gonna do it on this one too. I think mine's done. Blended it out, got my colors, got my stuff. I got a water drop right there, but I'm not mad about it. It's fine. Yeah, it adds to it. Gentries. Yeah. <laughs> I should have splattered mine on purpose so it we could have been in the same. I'm so sorry I did that. I feel terrible. I'm never coming back. <laughs> I will never paint again. I will never do this again. Uh, Especially because like, if you do that, there's not really a lot you can do to take that away. So sorry, I couldn't even erase it for you. That's okay, I think we're ready for our close-ups. Oh, somebody just, Linda said she added some random seeds outside the apples. That is a great idea. I wanna do that. I'm gonna do it right now. Reveal, just kidding. So she just said little, 
little apple seeds. What a great idea, Linda. You guys are smart. Now maybe you don't like little apple seeds. Well, don't don't put them out here then. I'm just doing it because I like them. That's a seedy looking painting. <laughs> a seedy looking painting. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so wherever there's these little, okay. They almost look like brown raindrops. <laughs> it's pretty, okay. It's like purple rain, but dirtier. Dirty purple rain. <laughs> Mastards. Okay. Oh, I ruined the frog. He's okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> Kimberly says they're tadpoles since they came from the frog. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kimberly, that was funny. Okay. Kimberly, my Kimberly. <laughs> I got my seeds. Oh, I need one over here. My Kimberly. No, he knows what I'm talking about. No, she's my Kimberly, you guys. Oh, I know who your okay. Kimberly is. Yeah. I don't know who they're talking about. No, she's mine. So <laughs> <is> so salty. <laughs> okay. You guys ready for the reveal? So we do a slow, we hold up our paintings. Brock slow pans across. This is the fun part. <laughs> this is a part where you can see everybody is okay. And remember, we don't use this time to compare it to our own. We use the time to see how other people approach the same thing that we're painting. Because these are all gonna look different. They're all gonna have their own things. They're all going to have something awesome about them. So, as long as it's not too drippy. Mine is drippy. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lift up some color for you so you can hold it up because we have to see this gentry. The world needs to see this. Dang, there's some good color there. Those leaves. Mm. Those leaves are awesome. And peach, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Apples and peaches. Apples and peaches. Okay. Please tell me somebody else made a peach. No, it's not drippy. <laughs> Sarah was trying to make bell peppers earlier, so. Mine, yeah. Yeah, this one on the example is looking a little bell peppery. This one is a peach, I feel. That could be a peach. That could be. This okay. One is Okay, we're gonna hold it up. Even if you're not done, hold it up, face it towards that camera. He's gonna slow pan across. The slow pan. The slow pan of everybody's amazing work. Oh yeah, look at those apples. Look at that, look at those look apples. At just look at it. And the leaves and the seeds. You guys, amazing job. Ooh. We got it? Okay, yay, good job everybody. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> okay, if you painted this with us, share it. I know it's so scary putting your paintings out there because you're afraid people will judge it. Well, guess what? That's not what we're about here. So be brave, put it out there. And when other people see you being brave, they wanna be brave and they wanna try it. And then maybe you'll find painting buddies and you'll just do painting parties every week with us. That's the dream. So. If you put it on Instagram, tag us in it. Our Instagram account is Let's Go Make Art. We have a Facebook group where everybody posts their paintings. It's extremely supportive. I love it very much. That's called Let's Make Art Together. And you can post your work on there and people will just tell you how awesome you are and it's an amazing thing. So do that. And next week we are doing our cat. Yay, our Halloween cat. It's fun. So we'll release that tutorial Tonight? Tonight. Tonight? Tonight-ish. We'll put that tutorial up tonight. I'll email it out to you guys tomorrow with the link for that. So get practicing for that because we're going to paint that next Tuesday, 7.15. I know today's Wednesday. This is like a one-time thing that we did it on Wednesday. So thanks for stopping in, and we'll see you next Tuesday at 7.15. That's it. Bye, you guys. Bye.